Hello and welcome to the third installment of 14 Cool Things Built with GPT-3. If you don't know, GPT-3 is an AI model recently released by OpenAI. It's currently in private beta. However, the people who do have access to it every week, it seems like people are coming up with new and exciting things, uh, building cool and exciting things with it. We still don't know entirely what it's capable of even doing. So that's part of the reason I love making these videos is because I'm learning something too. I'm somebody who has access. I learn every day uh, something new that GPT-3 is capable of. So I'm gonna be showing you 14 cool use cases today. Let's get started. So uh, in this first use case, uh, this person has made uh, essentially, I guess, an extension for email, which basically uh, all you have to do is enter a short snippet of the email that you want written and GPT-3 will write that email for you. So he's just writing a thank you, I guess, note to OpenAI. And GPT-3 generated this entire email for him. Uh, pay attention, like it put in all the typical email kind of business fluff. It sounds very professional, it's well written. I could see this saving people a lot of time, including myself, I would use this tool. Very cool use case for GPT-3. Uh, next, somebody made something which can comment code, help you write code, explain code, and even explain your bugs to you. Uh, this is really exciting. I would use this as a developer, and I think we're just starting to see what's possible with using GPT-3 as an aid for developers. So that's part of the reason I wanted to share this is just to just to get it out there that a lot is possible. Uh, next, I want to share this tool called Dover. This is something real, like real live that you can use right now. Basically, you put in a summary of a job description and on the right, it generates the entire job description for you. Um, this is something that somebody who works in HR or somebody who works in recruiting could heavily use because they are constantly having to write job descriptions. Um, it doesn't take a, your full amount of attention to write job descriptions. I can see it being really tedious, uh, but it's exciting that this tool exists now uh, through GPT-3. It can save people who work in HR a lot of time. Next, I wanna show somebody made a code editor from scratch with GPT-3 code completion assistance. The reason I wanted to share this is I think there's an opportunity through GPT-3 to reimagine the code editor. Now that we have all these ways to use GPT-3 to help developers write code, I think it's about time somebody made a code editor that leverages them fully and saves developers time and maybe helps them focus on higher level ideas like architecture and usability. Uh, very cool use case for GPT-3. Uh, next, Peter Levels made a, essentially a startup idea generator using GPT-3. Um, some of these ideas are pretty cool, I think, that GPT-3 came up with. They're pretty impressive. Others are sort of a miss. I'd say I'd say this can be hit or miss. Um, I, th I think we're still at the beginning, early days of using GPT-3 just to generate ideas in general for any context or industry, whether it's art or music or videos or startups but I still think it's cool and an exciting use case for GPT-3. Uh, next, this company called Other Side AI made a tool. You can enter a few bullets and it generates your entire email for you with your signature too. Uh, this is a really exciting use case for GPT-3. I could see this saving lots of people around the world a lot of time. Great use case. Uh, next, somebody made sort of a text companion using GPT-3, so I guess uh, you can just sort of text this number and just have a conversation with GPT-3. Uh, the reason I wanted to share this is one of the when in one of the early days of GPT-3 being released in private beta, I remember somebody tweeting how he was almost using GPT-3 as a therapist. Like literally every night before bed, he would just share what happened in his day or what he's thinking about and just get feedback from GPT-3. And uh, I think this is a really exciting use case. Uh, it's certainly nice to have uh, a, a, an AI assistant which can somewhat understand what you're saying, where you're coming from and comment on it. Maybe it provides some objectivity or perhaps even sympathy in your life. 
Um, I'm going to check out sendblue.co later today, maybe share my findings. But if anybody else wants to share or has access to sendblue or is using it and wants to put in the comments uh, how they're finding it and uh, how it's going, I'd love to read about it as well. Very cool use case for GPT-3. Uh, next is a tool called Story Mapper, which can help you uh, map out, I guess, RPG games and design them. Uh, you can see here they're sort of entering some stuff. And GPT-3 can, using GPT-3, help generate all these flows for the game. You can probably create some really complex games using this. Very cool. Uh, next, uh, this person has basically uh, used GPT-3 to generate jokes. But what I like is they took it to the next level and are connecting these jokes with a video feed and using uh, machine vision to recognize either when they're laughing or smiling and then using that to reinforce to GPT-3 the jokes which were actually funny. I wanted to show this application just because I like that people are using machine vision with GPT-3 now. Uh, this was stuff I hadn't really been seeing up until this point. I think this is a very cool combination of the two. Uh, next, somebody is basically feeding GPT-3 situations and having it come up with ideas on how it could potentially escape <laughs> the situations. So in this case, uh, he's told GPT-3, you're in a room with an old man. You don't know the population of Europe, but there's a book there. And GPT-3 has suggested that he should open the book and read the population, sum up all the populations, and then yell the answer to the old man and the door would magically open. The reason I wanted to share this is I think it's fun, but also I think it does demonstrate GPT-3's maybe ability to figure out what's even possible given a situation, given certain objects. Um, it knows it can open a book. It knows it can read the population out of the book. It knows you could maybe total the population. And then it knows using these sort of uh, available objects within this scenario, you could potentially get the door to open. So it, it is somehow, I guess, within reason um, of what's possible in that situation and is trying to creatively find a way out. Very cool use case of GPT-3. I think this, this sort of thing requires a lot further analysis because it's, it's really, really fascinating. Uh, next, somebody has used GPT-3 to generate Flask backend code. In my previous videos, I've shown you that GPT-3 can generate front-end code pretty pretty easily. Now we're seeing the backend as well. It generated all of this for him. Uh, he's copying it into a code editor. He's saving it. Next, he's going to just run it locally. It's booting up the backend server. It's, it's booted up. Now when he goes to it, there it is. Um, let that play right and so it even put in his name so it was accepting parameters too uh, we are now seeing both the front end and the back end capable of being written by gpt3 uh, this is exciting clearly approaching some vector some direction of full stack development uh, next this person made something which uh, basically uh, s s given a design it can basically use GPT-3 to explain the design. So it's like converting a design into natural language. Um, I think this is just cool. I think it's cool, I think it's exciting. I, th I think just even being able to discuss a design and maybe if it listed some of the components on there, that'd be really exciting to help non-designers understand what they're even looking at, the specific components, and maybe have better conversations around it, especially when providing feedback. Uh, next, this tool, somebody made essentially a better dictionary. So what they've done is given the content of the page, uh, it then gives you the definition. So it's like a new and improved dictionary which uses context of the situation you're already in. Now watch, this person is looking up serve using this tool and uh, GPT-3 has generated verb tennis hit the ball to begin play for each point of a game. And so it's like context, it's like a context specific new and improved dictionary. I thought this was really cool. And I really wanted to share this because this is, this is really about improving something using GPT-3, improving dictionaries, not just using GPT-3 GPT to be a dictionary, but to improve the dictionary itself. Very exciting use case, very innovative. I, I commend this person for making this tool. Uh, next, this was just a really fun, awesome use case for GPT-3. 
uh, basically this person is uh, talking to themselves in augmented reality and GPT-3 is generating the responses and so he's having basically a conversation with himself using GPT-3 <laughs> and uh, AR kit so a uh, very fun use case very cool um, that's all I had to share today uh, please make sure you like and subscribe to my videos I have more stuff coming in the works and uh, I really appreciate your time today thanks so much for watching